Focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable. Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industry of FIKI's 92nd Annual Business Convention was held on 20th and 21st December 2019 in New Delhi. The event witnessed several policy makers, industry captains, global Indians and other thought leaders address an August gathering. The theme of the convention was Roadmap to a $5 trillion economy. I think most importantly, Everybody is moving forward with a sense of commitment. How can we make it happen? And that is really the crux of what FIKI stands for. To be the definitive voice of the Indian industry, to assist in the growth and the development of the country and the business and the economy, and to do so in a manner in India and globally, boosts our economy but also brings a greater stature to India. So I go forward with a sense of humility for the tremendous organization which has been built up over the last 92 years and a sense of commitment because I believe that service to FIKI is actually service to the country. So we look forward to inputs from the government, a greater enthusiasm from the industry, partnerships with banks and other institutions, whether it's ASOCHAM or FLO, who's an important member as well, and all other associate and collaborative bodies, we will work together, we will innovate, we will find new ways, we will focus on science, innovation and entrepreneurship, and bring in a new sense of energy, purpose and determination towards this tremendous goal of achieving a $5 trillion economy for India. As we think, we think of an inclusive economy, we will make sure that every individual is positively touched by this vision, our commitment and our theme. We will be proactive in our thought process and we will definitely find ways to evolve which are innovative and in age, uh, in keeping and in line with the digital economy and the thought process. We understand India's strengths. We look forward to building on those strengths towards this positive, proactive goal of a India which is inclusive, which is prosperous, and which is, makes everybody believe that indeed this is the decade of India. In his inaugural session, Sandeep Somani, immediate past president Fiki, spoke about strengthening the partnership between government and industry. It is only the venerable partnership between the industry and government that can bring the 7, 8 percent and even higher in the coming quarters and years to achieve the target set by the Prime Minister of making India a five trillion economy soon. The convention also hosted the Minister for Railways, Commerce and Industry, Piyush Goyal, who also stressed on the need for a sustained dialogue between government and industry. I commit myself to being a part of this journey to five trillion dollars with you. and show you that every one of the issues that are flagged off will be taken to its logical end. Where I'm not able to solve it, I'll share with you what the issues are, what the concerns are. But we'll certainly give it every possible shot that's possible to make that happen. Sir, as we say thank you to you for your presence, for your promise of partnership, for your continued accessibility, for the depth of your understanding of every subject and the way in which you go, go to the really to the bottom and find innovative solutions, all of us collectively say two things, not just one. First, thank you. And second, that we are with you. Chief Economist at IMF, Geeta Gopinath, shared some interesting insights on what ails the Indian economy, how a turnaround can be brought, and the current global economic outlook. One is uh, with respect to the, you know, financing. The finance sector, the, uh, the, with, the, with the banks, 
uh, and the non-bank financial corporations, the stress associated with them uh, is more persistent uh, and is deeper than uh, many projected. So second, of course, is rural income. Uh, and rural income growth is very important. You know, the government has taken steps in terms of providing more income to, uh, to, to farmers. But that's not going to permanently solve the problem. There is a big need for raising productivity in agriculture in, in India. Uh, and that's an important factor. And third, I would keep in mind the fact that for India, macroeconomic stabilization, macro stability is very important, which means stability on the fiscal front, a clear sense of uh, keeping to the target of fiscal consolidation is very important. Now that would require both increasing revenue mobilization and also rationalizing expenditures. India's infrastructure and the MSME segment has a vital role to play in India's roadmap to $5 trillion. This session deliberated on the strategy of the government in these two critical segments. The five trillion economy ki jo target we have उसमें एक ध्यान में आया कि हमारे देश के एक्सपोर्ट कितने हैं और इंपोर्ट्स कितने हैं तो दुनिया में जो अच्छा रिकॉर्ड है वो चाइना का है दुनिया के पूरे ट्रेड बिजनेस में 17 परसेंट चाइना एक्सपोर्ट करती है और हमारा जो कंट्रीब्यूशन है वो 2.6 परसेंट है और ये 2.6 परसेंट जो है इसको कम से कम आठ से दस परसेंट तक ले जाने के लिए अपॉर्चुनिटी इस समय सबसे अच्छी है Indian industry, by using the best technology in the world, हम हमारे देश में import को कम करें और import के बजाय export oriented बने, ये सबसे priority पर हमारा agenda है। और इसके लिए कम से कम जो अध्ययन हम कर रहे हैं, उसमें मेरा सुझाव ये है कि उसमें government किस प्रकार की भी policy स्वीकार करे, ताकि हमारे यहाँ रोजगार निर्माण हो, growth rate बढ़े। और उसके साथ साथ हमारा एक्सपोर्ट बढ़े। In the fireside chat between Sandeep Somani, founder and chairman of Vedanta Resources, Anil Lagarwal shared anecdotes on his personal growth story, his global ambitions, as well as his Indian plans. मैं आपको सबसे एक ही वादा चाहता हूँ। रिस्क लेना क्या है? इस लाइफ में अगर रिस्क नहीं लेंगे तो फिर काम आगे कैसे बढ़ेगा? और टीम बनाना, लोगों पे ट्रस्ट करना, जो भी होगा ट्रस्ट करेंगे। जो हिंदुस्तान में पोटेंशियल है हिंदुस्तानी के लिए और कहीं हो ही नहीं सकती है प्यार से मोहब्बत से हम आगे बढ़ते हैं और हिंदुस्तान में तो आज कुछ है ही नहीं बेस्ट लेवल पे चल रहे हैं और ये गवर्नमेंट ऐसी आई है जो क्लीन स्लेट दे रही है हम लोगों की बहुत तकलीफें हुई तीन चार साल में क्योंकि हमारी हम तैयार नहीं थे ऐसी पोजिशन से ऐसी बात से गवर्नमेंट भी समझी है हम भी समझे जो मेरे को समझ में आता है आने वाले दिनों में मेरे को लगता है कि बहुत अच्छी अपॉर्चुनिटी है आप लोगों को आगे बढ़ने के लिए। In the next session, Dave Richards spoke about how innovation is key to higher and inclusive growth across sectors. India has a golden opportunity to be a major player in deep tech because you have a very precious resource. You have millions of tech-savvy young people and a huge number of the world's most precious resource, 1.35 billion human brains. The next session with secretaries of key ministries deliberated on the government's vision for making India a $5 trillion economy by 2024-25. One of the things that is very high on our agenda is to make our courts e-courts, electronic courts. Now, our effort is now to go towards e-filing in a big way. On ease of doing business, we are going whole hog. Agriculture contributes around 8.7% uh, as per uh, the last statistics of 2017-18, while livestock contributed around 4.1%. So it's almost half of agriculture. The return on income of every rupee invested gives you around 4.7 rupees as a return in this sector compared to around uh, 3.9 in around agriculture and around 2.9 in manufacturing. This is an area where, uh, where there is uh, a better return, number one, and second is it's also, uh, as far as the regulatory aspects is concerned, it is one of the easiest uh, uh, sector to do business. 
The country needs an energy basket that is accessible, affordable and sustainable to achieve the $5 trillion goal. The session with Dharmendra Pradhan looked at the government's initiatives and the way ahead. हम लोगों ने टारगेट किया है हमारी मिस बास्केट रहेगी हम कन्वेंशनल फ्यूल को यूज करेंगे हम टेक्नोलॉजी इनोवेशन इसकी सहारा करते हुए हम आवश्यक पड़े तो हाइड्रोजन फ्यूल तक भी यूज करने की प्लान करेंगे लेकिन हम एक फ्यूल पे नहीं अटकेंगे हम सीबीएम के उत्पादन बढ़ाएंगे सिंगियास के उत्पादन बढ़ाएंगे देश में 600 मिलियन मेट्रिक टन बायोमास उपलब्ध है हमने योजना बनाई है जो 600 मिलियन मेट्रिक टन बायोमास है नॉन फॉसिलाइज हाइड्रोकार्बन है आज टेक्नोलॉजी उपलब्ध है उसी को प्रोसेस में डाल के कई प्रकार की प्रोसेस में डाल के उसमें से हम ऊर्जा निकालेंगे In another interesting session, a panel of young MPs shared their views on the role of the youth in politics. Indian digital economy is projected at around 1 trillion dollars by economic value by 2025. The session with Ravi Shankar Prasad laid out the steps the Indian government is taking to make the country a global leader in the digital space. And what is the digital economy? Digital payments, digital delivery of services, low cost cyber security, e-commerce rising ecosystem, uh, innovation, AI, new technology. All this is going to power India into the big global league which we are working together. Obviously, it generates a lot of data. And data protection law becomes the buzzword. We have already framed our law which is under consideration by the select committee. And what is the system we have put in place? The data principle, that means the owner of the data, you all must give consent to the fiduciary, the company, to part with your data. And that consent must be voluntary consent, well-informed consent. And that consent must be for a limited purpose. And if you cross that purpose, you will suffer penalty. Thank you. Namaskar. Day two of the convention began with a panel comprising economists who deliberated on the need of structural reforms in order to address pain points of the sectors facing stress. The Reserve Bank of India, which in February 2019 had said that the growth rates will be in the region of 7.6%, have revised them in November to 4.9%. And we see that this is happening across the board no matter which agency is predicting. Uh, and the decline in the predictions, I think, is unprecedented. And why has it happened? What exactly are the reasons and what are the triggers which we missed in terms of understanding and predicting this slowdown in the economy? I think that's really the first question I'd like to put to the panel. If you look at the record, the growth rate has been coming down from 8 to 7 to 6 to 5 over 4 years. This is not actually a recent happening. So in fact, look at the annual data. Secondly, stagnation in ca corporate investment, especially in private sector corporate investment, uh, that's capital formation, is a four-year story, three-year story. So let's, you know, maybe we didn't play, pay heed to that. Then the four balance sheet stresses, which goes back to actually the economic survey uh, when the previous chief economic advisor was there, the balance sheet stress on NPS due to, in banking, the stress due to infrastructure companies, now the stress due to NBFs, NBFs, the ILFS was September 2018, almost two, now, you know, uh, uh, more than a year ago. And uh, you have the, now the real estate. And then, of course, you had two other incidents which are slightly older. One is the 
uh, disruption uh, on Brexit. I'll just take half a minute on that. And then, of course, well, you had the unilateral action of Mr. Uh, the President of uh, U US sanctioning against China. That was also somewhat, it came out of the blue that suddenly you have 20% duties on steel, aluminum. So I think these two contributed more, but let's not forget the balance sheet crisis in India as well. The session with top corporate brains saw deliberation on the actual impact of a slew of measures taken by the government with the aim of reviving manufacturing, improving infrastructure and attracting investments. Chhattisgarh Chief Minister Bhubesh Bhagel said that the target of making India a $5 trillion economy could be beneficial only if basic needs of each citizen get fulfilled and that farmers should be given a profitable value for their yield to ensure that demand in the market does not fall. The vikas is the same as the economy. You have taken the $5 trillion of the economy, but you have to pay for it, 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 you have to pay for it. I think that it's very sad that Korba is such a district in Chhattisgarh, where सबसे बड़ी बड़ी कोयला की खदानें हैं जहां 10,000 मेगावाट पावर के बिजली उत्पादन होता है जहां एल्युमिनियम के प्लांट लगे हैं हिंडाल को बाल को हिंडाल को बगल में उत्तर प्रदेश में हमारे बाल को है लेकिन हिंदुस्तान के जो 110 गरीब जिले हैं उसमें से कोरबा भी एक है तो इसका अर्थ ये है कि हमने समावेशी विकास नहीं किया हमको उस दिशा में भी काम करना होगा कि देश के कुपोषण है भुखमरी है गरीबी है और लोगों को रोजगार ये सब को ये होना जरूरी है गुजरात बहुत उन्नत प्रदेश है लेकिन आप जो जितने भी सेक्टर आप देखेंगे चाहे हेल्थ में एजुकेशन में सबसे निचले पायदान में तो ऐसे विकास नहीं चाहिए what is the required financial architecture to support a $5 trillion economy and how do we get there? All that and more was deliberated upon in a special plenary with SBI Chairman Rajneesh Kumar. If India has to achieve its goal of a $5 trillion economy, then it cannot happen unless there is investment in the economy. And for investing in the economy, we know what are the sources. It is government budgetary resources, it is private investment, it is capital provided by the bank, it could be domestic, it could be international. Today, the outstanding bank credit is 96 lakh crore. So for a 5 trillion economy, we would at least need to double it, which is what we are looking at is 1 lakh 97 thousand crore over a 5 year period. So this is a very good business opportunity for the bank. There is no doubt about it. And the current gross capital formation rate, which is around 30% or so, it needs to go up to at least 37 or 38%. GST has transformed India's taxation framework, but there are still many challenges plaguing the transition, especially those related to the rationalization of rates and compensation. The session with Sushil Modi discussed on the workable solutions for industry. Tax rates ko GST constantly lagatar kam kar diya. In the last two and a half years, more than 422 goods and 80 services, is par jo tax rates tha wo kam kiya gaya. Kyon kam kiya gaya? It was not because of any populism, because each and every state was there in the GST council. Optic wise. If you go to buy a freeze or an air conditioner or a washing machine, if you say the tax of 28% or more than 28%, so to see that 28% we have to pay tax on the tax. Pre-GST it was more than 28%, 31, 32, 35. I will not go into that, but I will say that that post-GST 99% of the items are having less tax rates what was earlier uh, pre-GST regime. The session with the founders of leading startups highlighted how the rise and growth of startups would lead to higher GDP, employment opportunities and wealth creation. 
at different stages in the evolution of a startup or as you, you as an entrepreneur, you would need different kinds of mentors. Uh, so having the right mentor who um, is uh, unbiased and who is without agenda to help you is very important. Beyond that, you still need to, as an entrepreneur, need to remain centered. That this is something I still want to do. Um, this is what my idea is. I, so making sure that you draw the line between getting mentored to getting pushed and then the third is to stay um, fixed to something even though the mentor in the whole world tells you that you're wrong. So any of these three <laughs> things are possible. We come to the end of an extremely exciting and very inspirational session. This has been a tremendous end uh, to the 92nd AGM. It's our last session. We've been through uh, one and a half days, almost two days, of talking about how to make India this five trillion dollar economy. Focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable.